Steve Adubato here on location for State of Affairs. We're in uh, Camden, New Jersey. We're sitting with United States Congressman Donald Norcross from the 1st Congressional District. Uh, Congressman, before we talk about public policy and life in Washington, just tell folks your connection to Camden, personal, family. Yeah, well, I was born here. My father was raised here. My grandmother had a bakery right down on Kane Avenue, and I've lived here for the last decade. And it's a great place to live and certainly a great place to uh, look to the future of what America has to offer. It's right here in Camden. Congressman, let's do this. The, the role of the federal government mm -hmm. in helping to revitalize, support cities like Camden, Newark, Jersey City, wherever you want to talk about Trenton, New Brunswick. What is that role as you see it? Well, the role that the federal government plays is not that unusual when you compare it to state government. We all have a state. You formerly in, served in the state legislature. I was in the state senate and assembly for a short time. But it's to serve those residents. So whether it's job creation or many things we can do on the federal level, from tax credits to creating grants, uh, so that uh, the fire department can expand and keep uh, the people here safe. But it's also about creating an atmosphere for jobs mm. to make sure that Camden City, just like any other town or city here in the state of New Jersey, has the uh, economic engine to create jobs. You know, it's the best social program you could ever hope for is a good job that right. pays the bills and family can have health insurance and retire with dignity. So we set the stage, but it's up to the local environment to build it. Congress, we talk a little bit about the mood in Washington, about political polarization, divisiveness. Yeah. Are we as divided and polarized as many of us think we are? At times, we certainly are. Because? I, th I think that stage has been set by the president. You know, the president is the leader of the free world. And when you see such divisiveness coming out of the White House, it sets the stage for not only the federal government, but the state government. Um, nobody w wants to assess blame. Myself, more than anybody else, want to make sure that we come together. You know, the idea of being polarized during election season, we understand. But after we have, the, Excuse me, we happen to be taping just a few weeks before the midterm, if you yeah. will, elections. Yeah, but so, it feels like war sometimes between Democrats and Republicans, not a civil discourse with people who have different ideas about how uh, government should function. It doesn't feel like that very often, Congressman. Yeah, we just came out of the hearings for Supreme Court Justice that... Uh, Justice Kavanaugh. I, yeah, that we don't look at as one of the shiny moments in our democracy. What was so bad about it? Well, we weren't looking for the best and brightest. We weren't looking for the truth. At least this is my assessment. If you were a Republican, you were going to make sure that Kavanaugh got through no matter what. It seems like many of the Democrats are looking to stop him at all costs. No matter what? No matter what, on both sides. Is that the job of a member of Congress? Uh, in my opinion, absolutely not. At the end of the day, we're supposed to maybe be elected as a Democrat or Republican from a blue state or a red state. But afterwards, we're all Americans. And I think many of my colleagues tend to forget that. But it's easy to get sucked in that vortex when the guy upstairs is spewing hate yeah, left and right. Respectfully, Congressman, you, you can't put it all on the president. I didn't. We're all responsible well, what, what for is, his that individual. More specific, what do you think his contribution has been to the polarization in the country? He sets the tone. The president. He says the it's leader about of the winning. great country. It's about winning. I saw him on 60 Minutes as we're all dating ourselves. I saw him with Leslie saw on 60 Minutes. And she asked him after Kavanaugh was, you know, approved, he goes to the Supreme Court, why why rub it in the faces of the Democrats who lost and say, we won, you lost? Why mock uh, Dr. Ford? Is that what you're talking about? No, this is what, well, certainly there's the kind of examples. Thing. But let's go back to Charlottesville. Good people, white separatists? On both sides. Or, yeah. What this is the president what, what of the United when you, States. When you heard that, what did you think and feel? Immediately I thought, there's no way the president of the United States would say that, that somehow it was a mistake. But it was. It's our president who's setting the tone for the country. But excuse me, Congressman, he has a significant amount of support in and around communities like this. Right. Because? Because people voted for him. No, but, but, but what is it you think they see in him in spite of what it's, you're saying? Yeah, that's a great question. I've uh, thought about this quite a bit. Let's go back to Jesse Ventura. People are upset. You know, they see on TV all the arguing. Former going governor on. of Minnesota. They wanted to mix things up. Then you went and seen Arnold Schwarzenegger. 
in California. They wanted somebody to mix it up. You see this up. as a pattern? Absolutely. But what they found out is after one term, it was buyer's remorse that each of those individuals didn't deliver. We all want somebody who's plain speaking, you think they're telling the truth. We all aspire to be that. But at the end of the day, hate does not drive out hate. As Dr. King said, only love can do that. And I think if we look at our colleagues, how do we find that common ground together? You know, anybody who's married understands that... Uh, compromise? Compromise <laughs> is a good idea. Yeah. You know, we, we don't exclusively have the right to good ideas. You know, we need to be humble enough to take good ideas, whether they're from our side or not, and work with them. And we're not enemies, are we? Even if people have different no. political point of views. It's interesting. You have the American flag. You always wear that. You're a patriot. Yeah. How optimistic are you about, as a patriot, as a member of Congress, as a, um, a child and adult of this city, how hopeful are you for the future of our political system and our country? We've been through ebbs and flows the entire history of our country. We'll get through this. But with each experience, it gives us a better view of what works and what doesn't. Uh, you know, just a few weeks from now, we're going to have an opportunity to elect the next Congress. And I think that will speak volumes of what the country really uh, thinks and where we need to go. But at the end of the day, we're all Americans. And for those who aspire to be Americans, they need to have a pathway. They need to have a pathway because we are a nation of immigrants that have melded together to make the greatest country in the world. Congressman, I appreciate your time, particularly here in Camden, your hometown, and we're uh, optimistic about the efforts of you and your colleagues in Congress because we're counting on it. Thank you. Thank you. You got Thank it. You. That is it for this particular edition of State of Affairs. I'm Steve Arabato. This is Camden, and we will see you next time. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Agnes Veris NJTV studio at 2 Gateway. Funding has been provided by Rowan University, Choose New Jersey, Delta Dental of New Jersey, University Hospital, Newark, New Jersey. NJM Insurance Group, New Jersey Resources, Verizon, and by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State.